Today we're looking at combinations of transformations. Now when you're making more than one transformation, and remember we've learned already how to make translations, which is sliding up or down, left and right. We've learned how to make reflections. We've learned how to make rotations. And we've also seen dilations now. And we've seen how dilations can stretch or compress horizontally or vertically. But they can also be applied to perform reflections and rotations. So a little bit of revision here from yesterday. Don't write this down, but let's just keep this in mind. A dilation with a factor of negative one is actually a reflection. And you can do that in both directions. And an enlargement, now remember this word enlargement actually mathematically means that we're performing a dilation in both directions with the same factor. And it can be an enlargement or even a reduction and still be termed an enlargement, which is strange. Now, if it has a factor of minus one, then it actually flips it both ways, around the x-axis and around the y-axis, and that performs a 180 degree rotation. So for today, when we're thinking about combinations of transformations, let's think of reflections and rotations as being dilations. That way we've only got two things to think about. We've got translations, which is sliding things up, down, left or right. And then we've got dilations, which we know can be stretching or compressing in either direction, or if it's applied with a factor negative one, it can be a reflection or even a rotation. So the order of transformations comes about because there's a few rules that if you break them, will mess up your graphing if you're performing more than one transformation. Now, the rules are fairly logical, I think. Any two translations, so here we're talking about an up and a, and, or a down, as well as a left or a right. Now, we say that they commute. This is a new word, let's look at what it means. If they commute, then this means that they can be done in any order. So if you need to move something up and right, or down and left, or down and right, or any of those combinations, it won't matter which order you do it in, and you can just take your pick, do one, and then do the other. Now, it makes sense also that if you're doing two dilations, one horizontal and one vertical, they also commute. So that means that you can do those in, in any order as well. And this is, if you're wanting to you know, tie it down to something you already know, I think of the fact that if you're adding and subtracting, you can do those in any order. They're equally sort of powerful, if you like. You can multiply and divide in any order. They're equally powerful. But if you're doing a combination of one and the other, that's where you've got to be careful. So here's where we get to the tricky part. If you're doing a translation and a dilation, well, they only commute if one is horizontal and one is vertical. So let's imagine you're translating horizontally, that means sliding left to right, and you're also performing a dilation vertically, which means you might be stretching or compressing it this way, or even reflecting it upside down. That will be fine to do in any order that you like. They will commute because one is left to right and the other is up down. But if both are horizontal, or if both are vertical, we'll have a look at what that means in a moment, then you have to do the dilation first and then the translation. Thinking about this in terms of things that you already know, order of operations tells you generally that the more important thing to do first is multiplication and division, and after that you do adding and subtracting. So you can think of multiplication and division as the thing that's more important to do here when you have one of each and they're in different directions, dilate first, then translate second. Now there's some extra information in these sentences just to make it really clear what it is that we're talking about. If both are horizontal, well that would mean that you've had a horizontal stretching, which would mean it's going like this, either compressing or stretching, or even reflecting around the y-axis, because that's a horizontal um, dilation, and you're wanting to also shift horizontally left to right, then you'd need to do the dilation first and then the translation. And similarly, if you are stretching vertically, which means this way, or reflecting around the x-axis, flipping upside down, and you want to shift up and down, then you'll perform the dilation first and the translation second. And if you're in doubt and you've got one of each, well, it turns out you can do them in, in any order if they're one horizontal and one vertical, but if you just follow this rule, dilate first, and translate second, even with those ones, you won't go wrong. And that's probably an easy way to remember it. 
Now, bear in mind that many questions will actually tell you what order you need to make transformations in. So if they've given you an order, which is different from the one that we've just learned, go ahead and follow it. What we're really getting at here is saying that if you have the choice to make transformations in a certain order, then if you don't follow those rules that we've just seen, your growth will turn out differently depending on how you do it. So let's have a look at an example here. Let's investigate whether the order really does matter when we perform these two operations, a reflection around the y-axis. So if it's going around the y-axis, that means it's going horizontally and a shift of two units to the right. Now that's also horizontal. So by rights really here, it should matter and I'm expecting it to matter. But let's just investigate to check that it really does. So let's first perform the reflection and then the translation. And then we'll do them the other way around. We'll do the translation and then we'll do the reflection. All right. So if we're doing the reflection first, we would need to say, all right, we need to replace x with negative x, because if we're reflecting around the y-axis, then we're swapping things over here with things over here. So the first step would be to rewrite our formula, but switch the x to be minus x. And if we're then going to translate it two units to the right, well, now we need to take our x and we need to replace it with x minus 2, because that's what moves it two units to the right. So let's rewrite it again, and instead of writing x, I'm going to write x minus 2. And notice I've put the x minus 2 in brackets here. So the same function could be written actually like this, because if I expand these brackets, this is effectively what I'm going to have. All right, now the other way that we could do it would be to say, all right, let's re rewrite, but let's replace our x with x minus 2. And if we were then going to perform the reflection, well, we'd take the x and we'd replace it with negative x, which would give us negative x where the x was, and then a minus 2. Now, you can see straight away that this formula and this formula look different. They've both got y equals 2 to the power of minus x. But this one says plus 2, and this one says minus 2, and this should be a red flag to you straight away that the order is going to matter. Because if we plug these into Desmos, we're going to get two completely different graphs. And this concept should be quite obvious too if we just imagine what happens when we take our basic curve, y equals 2 to the power of x. If we reflect it first, it's going to flip it exactly where it lies, and it's going to sit like this. And if we then shift it two units to the right, this dotted line is going to come over here to the right. It's going to have an intercept way up here and move this way a long way. Whereas if we took our original curve, start here again, and we moved it to the right first, it would be sitting out here somewhere. And if we now reflect it, instead of coming out wide on the right-hand side, it's going to come out wide on the left-hand side. And we're going to have two completely different looking curves. So what we can see here then is that when we're looking at functions and thinking about how to graph them or what translations or dilations or reflections might have taken place, we need to be really careful to think about the order. Because this one, where we just did our translation and then our reflection, actually didn't translate two units to the right, did it? It ended up over to the left. Now how can we understand that? Well, we need to be able to put this into this kind of form because the brackets show us what to, do, um, what to do first in a way, which sounds a little counterproductive because normally with order of operations you do the brackets first. But here we don't want to do the translation first. What we want to do is think about what's happened here with the reflection. And then we can see that this graph actually has a translation to the left. This graph over here has a translation to the right, and it makes sense to compare this version of it with the negative out front of some brackets to show that it has a reflection, and then it has a translation to the right. This one actually goes left.